Hey guys, Cliff Graham back here in Colorado after an awesome trip to Puerto Rico. Uh, today I'm going to have you guys uh, come along on an adventure that I did uh, out on the island. We went on an invasive iguana uh, hunt. It was an awesome time. I took a couple buddies who had, who had never hunted before uh, and we all had a great time. I'm going to pop in uh, here and there and kind of give you my thoughts on you know hunting invasive species in general and just little thoughts along the way uh, that I think will be helpful. And also kind of put uh, this whole hunt in context for you. Headed on the iguana hunt. Yeah. Oh, come on, fall out of there. Oh, Jesus. There we go. It's like the final boss. <laughs> They can ran for it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's dead. Yep. Got him. So a little uh, iguana hunting tip that Raphael uh, got us in tune with pretty quick. These iguanas, particularly in the morning, they're in the top of the tree, right? And there's two reasons for that. One, they're cold blooded, so they're up trying to get sun, which to me is amazing. Like we were hot and sweating our asses off this whole hunt, but those iguanas still want to be up there in the sun as cold blooded animals. And then the other thing Raphael pointed out, which I see across a lot of different species of animals I hunt, is they really like the fresh new vegetation. And so that's why they're up in the top of those trees. Right there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right in the back right. of the head. You right. miss him. I mean, he's getting it anyway, so you might as well make it make take your time. Woo! <laughs> Good or no? I think you ran away. Ah, uh, you hit something. I hit him. I think he's a big boy, though. Damn it! Did he did he get him? Yeah, you can shoot again. He's in the same spot. You see him? Oh. Let me try to get where I can hit him in the head. Yeah. Oh, he's down, he's down, put the pellet, maybe he's going to run. Oh yeah, it is. Yep, yep, go get him boy. Okay. <laughs> nice shot, nice shot. Good deal. So the quick lowdown on you know how invasive iguanas are to Puerto Rico. Here's, here's my first take on it. When you go out and start hunting iguanas in Puerto Rico, you're gonna be stunned how many of these things there are. And it's gonna be very obvious to you that nature is out of balance, right? I mean, we would see, you know, 10, 15 iguanas, you know, some of them up to like 10 pounds, all in the same tree. So you can imagine, they're a huge burden on the agriculture system there. They're a huge burden on just the, 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 you know, the native ecosystem, right? And there's just way too many of them. So don't feel, don't feel bad about going out. We probably killed somewhere between 30 and 50, I guess. I, I don't really know. Um, but just realize it's a target rich environment and they really need to have the population thinned down. They're doing a lot of damage to the ecosystem there. Ooh, grande, huh? Grande. I'm gonna skin uh, one and put it on my, on the front of my car. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. Let's move in the back. One more. Oh, inside, another inside one? The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you want us home? <laughs> I think one of the most awesome things about traveling and hunting is that you run into people that have a totally different culture you, than you totally different background but you still share this uh, this excitement 
and basically this tr intrigue with hunting, right? So Raphael and his crew was no exception. We had a good time. We had maybe a little bit of a language barrier, but they spoke English pretty well. So they had a super cool uh, sense of humor. This little joke that he hit. I mean, he was kind of goofing with me the whole time. So we had a really good time. But that's one of the awesome things about traveling around and hunting. Doesn't matter, what, you know, what people's background is. You you have something in common with them, and you have a passion that they share. And so I'm sure I'll go back and hunt with Raphael. It's pretty, they got bars on their bellies, huh? Yep. Dead, huh? Mm hmm. I have one more. Yep. You see? Oh, yeah. You hit? Low, huh? Uh huh, a little low. Get the one. Wait. Okay. Ooh. Bueno. Bueno. <laughs> Gracias, Rafael. Hey, buen tiro. Yeah, yeah, we've been murdering them down here, unfortunately, dude. <laughs> Let we'll me get see. That one Let me see that one. Oh, grande, grande, huh? grande, big boy. We're noticing our guides are exceptional at seeing iguanas, but we can't see them hardly at all. It's a lot more difficult for us, but uh, we're starting to get it, the hang of it. This little clip cracked me up because I had crap in my beard uh, during the hunt. It was actually, that. what's really interesting to me is, is I've spent a fair amount of time in Puerto Rico, but when you get into the mountains of the island, the, the terrain and the vegetation is actually really rough. Everything's got pretty significant thorns on it. It reminds me a lot of West Texas, actually. Anywhere there's bushes, they're bound to stick you. So just keep that in mind. In that case, I had like a burr or a, you know a, something off of the vegetation I'd been crawling through stuck in my beard. But to the point, it was absolutely amazing how well these guides, Raphael and his partner, could find iguanas in the, in, in the trees. I was stunned. And it actually made me realize, you know, a lot of times over the years, I was super frustrated in guided, guiding mule deer or elk hunters because guys just couldn't see them or it took them a day while we were hunting to just kind of start to be able to pick them up on their own. And a lot of it is just getting used to, you know, you know the profile of the, the, uh, the iguana's body, how how they move in the trees, you know, how they move different than the, just the vegetation moving uh, um, with the wind, all of that. And then color was a huge one. So just realize that um, anytime you're hunting anything, it takes a while to just figure out how to see them. And then once you kind of get locked in, your brain gets dialed in, you start seeing them a lot more. And this happened for all, all of us, myself, Brent and Ryan. It took us two or three hours before we could even see any iguana, let alone all of them like Raphael and his crew could see. Uh, there there go. Go. Oh. Nice. Kill this one right here, Ryan. There's two right here, dude. <laughs> watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out. <laughs> it's raining, man. Him, He's in the tree here. Watch out! Raining water. Watch it! Watch out there. Head shot him. Nice. Just so you guys know. Um, even though we were hunting invasive species, Raphael and his crew were really respectful of the animals. When you're hunting these iguanas, and particularly because you're using basically air rifles, you're not going to kill them, you know, perfectly every single shot. You basically have to make headshots, so you're going to have follow-up shots. Raphael and his crew guided us through that process. Um, that might be a little tough on uh, guys that haven't done a whole lot of hunting, guys or gals that haven't done a whole lot of hunting. Um, you know, you got to put, you know, once you've wounded animals, you got to follow up make sure you kill them um, that was all an important part of the hunt and those guys were really good about that even though it's an, an invasive species we were real respectful on that front all right guys so processing and eating iguana right sounds pretty weird to a lot of people 
but turns out it's pretty common. Puerto Ricans themselves, um, from what I read and talking to uh, local Puerto Ricans, they don't eat a whole lot of iguana. It's not something they really uh, consider a food, but there's a whole lot of other areas in Central America and South America that actually view it as a delicacy. So, uh, Rafael and his crew, they, they guided me through, uh, you know, how to process an iguana and then cook it. This is one thing I'll say is they were substantially harder to process than other animals I was used to. They really don't have a membrane between their muscle tissue and their hide. Um, so skinning them to me was a lot more difficult, right? Uh, these guys, you know, probably have it down pat and they can do it a whole lot better than me, but I found it fairly difficult. I actually skinned a couple of them and salted the skins just to have those iguana skins. So that was probably, you know, added on an additional layer of processing that most folks don't do but what I found <clears throat> was after that if you didn't want want the skin the best meat and probably 80% of the meat was in the hindquarters and the tail right and the best way to get at that was essentially to cut the hands off um, cut the you know the thin part of the tail off and then essentially just remove that hind saddle as if you're removing the two hindquarters of a you know small deer or whatever um, take those off and then take that first like eight or nine inches of the tail and that's like 85 90 percent of the meat right Right? And uh, so that's that was the best process. It took me a while. They have an incredibly tough hide and it sticks. There's really, you know, I think if I, the next time I do it, I'll get a really good uh, spot to hang them up where I can really pull that hide off, but it's still gonna be a challenge. So anyways, guys, you know, here running through a couple pictures of the whole process, pretty difficult to process, but if I think if I, think if I focused on the actual, where all the meat was, I think I could have processed probably, you know, one of those, you know, six or seven pound iguanas. You know, it's probably gonna take you like, I don't know, maybe, seven to ten minutes an iguana once you got it down okay the other thing now on the on the meat so uh one thing people warn you is iguanas can carry uh salmonella like chicken um there there sounds like there's not much else you can really get from them. they're you know they're 99 percent uh herbivores um so the you know kind of the limitations of uh, uh issues that goes along with that is nice however because of the salmonella potential you need to make sure you cook them through just like you would chicken um it wasn't that difficult we essentially barbecue it the the meat is is really good i thought and i all of us did i don't really think that you're gonna find anybody um that uh that says iguana meat's offensive it's it's pretty good right uh and it does have a flavor right like we were joking around i was joking around with rafael uh, ryan and brent also and we were like what does it taste like and and he looked at his uh his fellow guides and he's like it tastes like iguana and I think that's actually a pretty good description guys you know maybe it tastes like another reptile out there I've heard it tastes like all alligator and I'm sure it does they're you know they're you know they're in the same family so I'm sure those are similar but it tastes like iguana it's good non-offensive I, I actually found it's kind of interesting because uh, you know in the hindquarters there's dark and white white meat kind of intertwined so that's kind of interesting but we just seasoned it barbecued it just like we would chicken and it was awesome we're gonna try the tails in like a you know slow uh, you know uh, <clears throat> slow cooker or pressure cooker type of situation but it was fine you know I think if you really cooked it uh, just like chicken you really overcooked it it's for sure gonna dry out but honestly guys it's great when I go back I'm gonna get that whole processing down a little bit quicker and I think I'd probably keep the vast majority of the guanas uh, that I that I shoot going forward just because it was pretty dang good meat so anyways guys I hope you really enjoyed this video something super unique for us um, and I think it's a great way for you guys to introduce new hunters for in the future or if you're an experienced hunter just go out and have fun and do it super super target rich and environment. Iguanas aren't the smartest animal on the planet, um, but it's a fun trip.